hey, let's get this party started. Just kidding. Let's wrap it up. <laughs> okay. I was I um I have always been fascinated by stories. Ever since I was a little girl growing up in Mexico, I would get my I would I would read everything I could get my hands on. But I especially like stories with happy endings, stories of triumph, of overcoming obstacles, hero stories. Who doesn't want to be a hero growing up? I wanted to be Princess Leia. So when the time came to choose a career, I expressed my desire to become a writer. But my dad told me that I would starve to death. So I took the path of least resistance and went to law school. Then I turned into linguistics and became a translator. A few years passed until one day I decided to pursue my passion, writing. I started writing a story in blog form and about 30 entries later, I figured that I had enough material to turn it into a novel. But how? I didn't have a writing background. I knew no one in the industry and who would publish a novel in Spanish in the United States. So in the summer of 2015, after quitting my job, I bought a one-way ticket to Mexico to find a publisher in pursuit of my dream. What I didn't know back then was that as I embarked on this journey, I would be rewriting the story of my life. On Sunday, March 20, 2016, I woke up like every other Sunday, happy and ready to go to the gym with my husband. It was our 23rd wedding anniversary. We woke up, congratulated each other for one more year without appearing in America's Most Wanted, and got up to start our routine. We had a nice lunch where we talked about the current state of things, with our 22-year-old son announcing a few days earlier that his girlfriend was pregnant, and our 20-year-old daughter back home after dropping out from college with no clear plan or direction plus our 12-year-old daughter hitting puberty. We had faced many challenges together before, and this would be no different. Everything would be all right. Three hours later, my life came crashing down. Winston Churchill famously said, when you're going through hell, keep going. 2016 was that year for me, one of great losses for the world. First it was David Bowie, and Prince, then Muhammad Ali, and then my personal hero, my father. He had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's and took a turn for the worst right in the middle of the four alarm fire I was trying to put out. A succession of life altering events was taking place and I wondered, why is all this happening to me? Um, why was all this happening to me? I wondered that. It was very difficult. People asked me, how did I remain calm throughout all the ups and downs that I experienced in that single year? This got me thinking. What makes some people deal with life-altering events better than others? What makes someone unthinkable? Do you see this guy here? It's called a Rana Silvatica, commonly known as a wood frog. It's a cute little frog, right? Now let me show you the Rana Silvatica in winter. She looks a bit uncomfortable because now she's a froxicle. Has the ability to freeze solid when the going gets tough. But come spring, it thaws, stretches out a little bit, and hops away. It's a survival skill. By freezing solid, it has the opportunity to regenerate and start all over again. It is also called adaptation. Adaptation takes thousands of years. We don't have that kind of time. Humans have to adjust to their circumstances, to changing circumstances very quickly. Two months before that dreadful afternoon, I had started working with an editor to publish my manuscript. My trip to Mexico had been unsuccessful, but I was unturred. I went back home, got involved with the local Latino literary community, and the editor of an online magazine agreed to publish my book. 
I was overjoyed by the prospect of fulfilling my dream. The book would become the raft that would keep me afloat. While preparing for this talk, I started to do some research on real life heroes. I wanted to find some common denominators in their stories, and I found a few. Oops. On January 15, 2009, flight 1549 took off from New York City to North Carolina and hit a flock of geese on takeoff. Both engines shut down. Minutes later, Captain Chelsea Sullenberg landed the plane on the Hudson. His years of training and experience kicked in the second he realized that the engines were gone. He focused on landing the plane first and took the necessary actions to achieve the best possible outcome. If you listen to the recording of the exchange with the control tower, his voice is always calm and in command. When the tower suggests he head to Tetherboro, New Jersey, he responds with 100% certainty, look for us in the Hudson. Captain Sully knew they were in trouble, but he was prepared, he was focused, and he took the necessary actions to achieve the best possible outcome. Not just action, but the best course of action. A hero story was written that day on the Hudson. When tragedy or a disaster or difficulty hits, it's normal to feel blindsided, confused, frozen. Other difficulties seem small, even prosaic. Pregnant girlfriend, college dropout, sick father, you're not alone. That is the story of life. Nobody gets a pass. I noticed also that action takes a lot of forms. Action doesn't have to look like a Star Wars movie. Action can be quiet, silent, even passive. Sometimes waiting it out can be the best course of action. Oops, oops. Uh, that was a punchline. Oh my God. Oh, there. Okay, so that is Rosa Parks. Uh, being booked after refusing to give up her seat back in 1955. By refusing to move, she ignited the civil rights movement. Many people think she did this out of the blue, but she didn't. She had a plan. A few had tried before her unsuccessfully, but she waited and waited a little bit more until the time was right. She had been prepared for this moment all her life. She was focused on sending a message on behalf of her community, and she took action at the right time by refusing to move. This selfless act of defiance changed the course of history and her story. Selflessness translates into fearlessness. When you put others before you, you get superpowers. Uh, any one of you can be a hero and not know it. We see this often when tragedy strikes, ordinary people like you and me suddenly doing extraordinary things. That March afternoon, after coming back from lunch, I went upstairs to my bedroom to read. My husband stayed downstairs watching TV. An hour later, my older daughter came running upstairs in a panic. Mom, I have to tell you something. I caught dad with a nap on his phone. What? What are you talking about? Grinder, mom. What's that? A dating app, mom. My head started spinning. A few minutes later, I confronted my husband, and with much difficulty, he admitted what my daughter had refused to tell me. Not that he was cheating, but that he was gay. I was stunned. I felt like Captain Sully. I had lost the engines, and I had to land this plane. Fortunately, I had more time than Captain Sully. So I had two choices. I could choose to be this, and there's the punchline. <laughs> or I could choose to be this. I chose Princess Leia. And it's okay, guys. You can also be Princess Leia. I focused on my book and the well-being of my children. And as long as I was calm and in command, I knew everything would be all right. At the end of May, 
I, uh, my book was launched at the National Museum of Mexican Arts in Chicago. Nobody had ever heard of me, but I was prepared, focused, and determined to make the event a success. More than 100 people attended it, and I can proudly say it was a hit, considering it was a novel in Spanish published by an unknown author in the United States. After the book launched, we told our children about our impending divorce and their father's sexuality, and they accepted him with open arms. Although saddened by our separation, they expressed that the only thing they cared for was our happiness. In October, I presented the book at the Monterey International Book Fair. The day after I came back, my granddaughter Valentina was born. Two weeks later, my father passed away in November. And in December, I presented the book at the prestigious Guadalajara International Book Fair to a packed room. That's the picture you see up there. Today, oops, today my ex-husband is my best friend and my family is still my family. I am working on my next novel and I have a beautiful granddaughter. I am prepared for the next chapter of my life, focused on the things that would add to my story to make it a good one. So remember, follow your passion because it's going to catch up with you sooner or later. And when the going gets tough, oops, again, prepare, focus, be fearless, take action, and make your story a good one. Thank you.